In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the RPCS3 emulator and play God of War 3 in it with the best settings for performance and stability. This is a new updated version of my original video, now including a more detailed step-by-step -step process on how to do all of this from start to finish. So let's get going. If you're planning on buying on Amazon, please use my affiliate link below in the description. Any product on the website will count and you will be directly supporting the channel. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna get is the emulator itself. The link for this page will be on the description of this video. And this emulator is available on Windows, Linux and Mac OS, but this tutorial is for Windows PC. So right here on the Windows section, you're going to click right here where it says download for x64. Go ahead and click on this one and put the file on the desktop of your computer. Also, still here on this page, you're going to scroll down a little bit and where it says installing on Windows, you're also going to download Visual C++. This is required in order for the emulator to work. So go ahead and click on this one to download the file and also put it on the same place, the desktop of your PC. Next, we're going to get 7-zip. This is required for extracting files if you are on Windows 10. But if you are on Windows 11, you can also get this file too, but Windows 11 has its own extracting feature, right? So you can just use that as well. But if you are on Windows 10 on 7-zip, click here on this download button to get the file. And you're also going to drop this on the desktop of your PC. Now on your desktop, you should have all three files with you, right? And we're going to start by installing VC++. It is this file right here. So go ahead and double click on this file. And this window will open up for you. And there is a chance that you already have VC++ installed on your PC. If you played games on your PC before, actual PC games that is, then there is a good chance that you already have it, which is the case for me right here. It says right here, modify installation. So if this window shows up for you, you don't have to install this. You can go ahead and close this, but if it does not, then you're just gonna keep clicking on next until it is fully installed. Next, we're gonna install 7-zip if you also got this file. And this one is very straightforward. You just have to double click on the 7-z file and this window will show up. And all you gotta do is just click here on the install button with a few moments and there you go. It's already installed, so go ahead and click on close. And you should see that both icons are going to look like the one that I have here, which means that 7-zip is working as it should. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and delete VC++ and also 7-z. We're not gonna need this anymore. You're just gonna need the emulator file itself. So what you're gonna do here on the RPCS3 file, you're gonna click on it with the right button and then Put your mouse on top of 7-zip and then you're going to click on Extract To and the name of the emulator. That way, all the files will be inside a folder. There you go. You should now have this folder with you and at this point, you can delete the original zip file. We're not going to need this anymore. So in here, you can go ahead and rename the folder if you want. I'm just going to keep mine with the default name. And now, you're going to double click on this folder to open. And as such, you're going to see all these files right here. And to start the emulator, you just have to double click on the RPCS3 application file. So go ahead and do that. And then it's going to take you to this window. In here, you can do some stuff like create a desktop shortcut or also change the theme of the emulator. This one is going to be up to you. Now to move on, turn off the show at startup option and enable the I have read the quick start guide and then just click on continue. And there you go. Now the emulator will show up for you. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Now, the first thing we're gonna do with the emulator is install the firmware. And we can get that on the official Sony website. The link for this page will be on the description of the video. So in here, you're gonna scroll down a little bit and arrive at this section, how to update PS3 system software. So you're going to click on this option, update using a computer, and then you're going to see this button showing up for you. For most people, just clicking on this button doesn't work. The download doesn't start for whatever reason. So what you're going to do here 
you're going to click on this button with the right button of your mouse. And on this option, you're going to select copy link address. And then you're going to paste this link on the browser that you are using. So you can go ahead and just right click on this one and select the paste option. Or you can just press Ctrl V as well. And now you just have to press enter to start the download. And you're going to download the firmware file to the same emulator folder. Here on my emulator folder, you can see that I have the firmware with me. It is this file, ps3update.pup. So now what you're going to do, go back to the emulator, click on the first option, file, and then you're going to select install firmware. It should open the emulator folder by default. So now you just have to double click on the firmware file. In case this file isn't showing up for you, you're going to go here to the bottom right side of the screen, click on PS3 update, and then you're going to change this to all files. Then you're going to see everything and including the firmware as well. So go ahead and double click on this one and it's going to take you back to the emulator and install the firmware. It should only take a few seconds and there you go. Go ahead and click on OK. And now it's going to compile the firmware PPU modules, but this one shouldn't take long. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Now to add the game, you're going to go back to your emulator folder and you're going to see that there is this folder here called games that was already created for you. And this is where the emulator is going to scan for the game. In order for this game to work on the emulator, the files need to be inside a folder. I have the game here on the ISO format, that is a disk image file. And if you have a copy of the PS3 version with you, you can rip that into your PC. I'm going to put the link in the description of a tutorial on how to do that. But if you don't have the game, you're going to have to sail the seven seas, if you know what I mean. But because of YouTube's guideline, I cannot show you here on the video how to do that because it's basically piracy. And if you do that, they will delete the video. So the best that I can say here without getting in trouble is that Google is your friend. And if you end up having the game on the ISO format, you're going to have to extract this with 7-zip. So you're just going to have to right click the file, select 7-zip. And then you're going to select the option that says extract to God of War 3. 7 zip might show you this message here saying that there is a arrow, but don't worry, that is normal. The game will work just fine. And now you're going to have a folder with the name of the game and inside you're going to see files very similar to this one right here. And at this point, you can go ahead and delete the original ISO of the game. But I'm going to recommend you to do this after you start the game and see if everything is working OK. And also make sure that this is the PS3 version of the game, because in my previous video, there were a bunch of people that had issues with it. And turns out that they had the PS4 remastered version, which of course will not work here. Now you're going to go back to the emulator and you're going to click on this refresh button right here. And as such, the game should appear. So as you can see, this is the vanilla version of the game. We're missing the 1.03 patch for it. And while it's not necessary to have the patch of the game, it is very much recommended to have that to fix any bugs that the game might have. And there is an easy way to grab the patches for the emulator. Using this tool right here, Rusty PSN, the link will be on the description of the video as well. So what you're going to do here is locate the latest version available for this. And then you're going to click on this assets option. And for this tutorial, because we are using Windows, this is the file that you're going to download right here. So make sure you get this one, click on it and download to your PC. I'm going to download this to the same RPCS3 folder so that we keep things organized. OK, so now on the RPCS3 folder, we have the file right here. This is a zip one, so you're going to have to extract this. You already know what to do. Right click on the file, select 7-zip. And for this one, you're going to choose the extract here option because there's just a single file in there. There you go. This is the file Rusty PSN application. You can go ahead and delete the original zip file right here. And you're going to have to double click on the Rusty PSN file to open. And there you have it. This is what the program looks like. And before doing anything else, 
first thing I'm gonna recommend you to do is to click on this little gear icon to choose the download folder of Rust DPSN. By default, it picks the emulator folder, but what I like to do here is click on the pick folder option. And now just navigate to the emulator folder. And in here, I like to right click anywhere on this folder, select the new option and select folder. And you can name this whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call this update. And still here, you're gonna click on this folder and pick the select folder option here on the bottom right side of the screen. Now the download path is going to change. And we're done here, so click on save settings. Now to download the patch, we're gonna need the game serial code. We can get that on the emulator itself. It's this code right here. So you're gonna right click on the game once Select copy info and click on copy serial. Now go back to Rusty PSN and you can just press Ctrl V to paste the code or you can right click and select the paste option. Now you're gonna click on search for updates. And there you go. There's only one update for God of War 3, so this is all you're gonna need. Go ahead and click on download file, wait for this to finish. And now you're gonna go back to the emulator. Click right here, it says file and then select the option install packages. Now on the emulator folder, if you did it like I did, you're gonna select the updates folder and inside a folder with the game and inside there's the patch. Now you can just double click on this file. This window will open, click on okay. Wait for this to finish, should be pretty fast and then click okay. And just like that, now the game is updated. Now for optimizing your game, the first thing we're gonna do is get the game patches for the emulator. And these are custom patches made by the community and they are very important to get more performance and stability on your game. And to go there, you're gonna right click the game once again, but this time you're gonna select manage game patches. This window will open and on your first boot, you're gonna see this message here. New patches are available. Click on yes to get them and then click on okay. Now you should see the name of the game. So you're gonna double click on that and then you're gonna select the option that says 1.03 that is with the update and here we have the game patches. Now the patches you want to use here are disable color grading, disable layered fog and disable SPU MLAA. Also go ahead and click on disable MLAA. This is for increasing the resolution of the game if your PC can support that. We're gonna get into that later. And also disable motion blur is optional. I personally like to turn that off too. And you also have the option to skip any cutscenes with the X button and the intro of the game as well, so that you get into the menu of the game faster. These two are optional, so it's gonna be up to you. The same goes for disable bloom, camera sway and depth of field. When you're done, click on apply and then save. Now let's tweak the emulator settings for this game and this is also very important right here. So once again, click on the game with the right button and select the create custom configuration option. This window will open and on the first option CPU, the only setting you have to change here is SPU block size. Click on this one and change this to mega. Now head over to the GPU tab. The first option frame limit go ahead and change this to 60 fps otherwise if at any moment in the game the fps goes higher than 60 it's going to speed up the game on an isotropic filter you can go ahead and change this one to 16x this will make the game look a bit better and it has minimal impact on performance next on additional settings click on right color buffers and texture streaming now right here on resolution, by default, the emulator runs the game at the original resolution of the PS3, that is 720p. But in case you want to increase the resolution of the game to make it look better, you're gonna keep the default at 720p and you're going to increase the resolution scale right here. But if you are going to use a resolution that is different than 100%, like let's say you're gonna play this at 1080p, you have to change the resolution scale threshold to 160 by 160. You can use the arrows on your keyboard to be more precise, but it has to be exactly this one. But like I said, this is only if you are changing the resolution scale right here. 
And also, this game is still very demanding on the emulator, so you're gonna need a very good GPU in this case to increase the resolution and still get good performance. So I'm gonna recommend you to start playing the game at 100% resolution, start the game and see how the performance is. But regardless of resolution, you're gonna need a very good CPU for this game. That's what this emulator requires the most to run your games. The resolution relies more on your GPU. Lastly, we're gonna head over to the Advanced tab. And the only option you have to change here is RSX FIFO accuracy. Click on this one and change to Atomic. Also, this part is optional, but I'm also gonna recommend you to go here to Emulator and you're gonna disable the Show Shader Compilation and PPU Compilation hint. They can be annoying because every time the emulator is doing one of this, you're gonna see a notification on the bottom left side of the screen. When you're done, click on Apply and then Save Configuration. Now, the only thing left to do is to configure your controller or keyboard. And for that, you're gonna click here on Pets to open up this window. And on this emulator, you can play with a keyboard or a controller. And this emulator supports pretty much all the official controllers out there from PlayStation and Xbox, but third-party or unofficial controllers can work as well. So if you don't have your controller plugged in, go ahead and do that right now. And if you are using a PlayStation controller, you just have to pick the one right here. But if you're using a Xbox controller like I am, you're gonna select this option here, X input. And if you are using a unofficial or third-party controller, the option that might work for you is also X input, but SDL can also works as well. So you're gonna have to test it out to see which one works for you. So I'm gonna click here on X input. And as you can see, the emulator has done the automatic mapping for me. But if you wanna change individual buttons, you just have to click on the one you wanna change and then press that button on your controller. And for using a keyboard, you just have to click here and select the keyboard option. When you're done, click on save and we're ready to start the game. And you can just double click to start this. It's gonna show you this option here. This is just a digital menu. Click on no, unless you wanna see that. And when you start this for the first time, the emulator is going to compile these PPU modules. And how fast this is going to be will depend on your CPU but shouldn't take that long anyway. And you only have to do this on the first time you start the game. To go full screen, you can either double click the screen or you can press Alt and enter on your keyboard. I have many more tutorial videos like this on the channel. So if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.